So we're doing lesson 7-9, simplifying rational expressions. All this is is taking expressions that you've already been solving and factoring and putting them into fraction form and simplifying. Okay, so all of the factoring, you know how to do. Simplifying expressions, you already know how to do. Now we're just putting those two together. Are you recording? Yes. Right. I think you knew that. All right. Okay, so with x minus 1, can we factor that any further? No, we cannot. So x minus 1 is going to stay x minus 1. Now, let's take 5x minus 5. Can we factor this any further? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We can divide both of these by five. And when we do that, we get five, oops, I don't know what I'm doing here. We get five times X minus one. Okay. So we just factored, that's nothing new. Now we're gonna simplify. When we simplify, we can cross off like terms, we can simplify fractions, and we can simplify exponents. In this case, we have x minus 1 on top and x minus 1 on bottom. Those both cancel each other out because any number divided by itself is 1. So x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 would be 1. And so then our final answer would be 1 over 5. All right, go ahead and do practice one. Okay, we're going to go ahead and show you the answer for practice one. You should have gotten one half. Any questions on those two types of problems? Okay, let's go ahead and go to example two. Can we simplify 2x minus 5? No, there's nothing that we can divide both of those by, those terms by. So it stays as 2x minus 5. And now we can factor 6x minus 15. So we can divide both of those by 3. We can't divide by x because 15 doesn't have an x. So we have 3 times 2x minus 5. Very similar to what we did above. And then 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 5 cancel out. So we are left with 1 over, you can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. 1 over 3. Yeah, I know. All right, go ahead and try practice two on your own. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you practice two. Any questions on those? All right, let's go to practice three. There's only one difference with this type of a problem. So I can factor out 5x plus 15. We could divide both of these by 5. Okay. So we end up with 5 times x plus 3. And then, of course, 45, there's nothing that we can factor out. So we just, okay. So can someone tell me, can we simplify anything here? Uh, yeah. What? The five and the 45. The five and the 45. It's basically just a fraction. So five and 45 are both divisible by five. So we divide them both by five. So I'm going to divide that by five. I'm going to divide this by five. And I get one. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 45 divided by 5 is 9. So when I write my answer, I don't really need to write the 1, so I'm not going to. So it's x plus 3 over 9. And that is your final answer. Now, I want to clarify a misunderstanding that a lot of students have, and that is that a lot of students will want to simplify the 3 and the 9, but you cannot do that. Imagine a parenthesis here. Both of these terms would have to be divisible by nine in order to do that. Okay, x is not divisible by nine. Okay. Yeah. You could also write x plus three, put that uh, parentheses, and put like 
Yeah, you could. You don't have to, but you can. All right. So go ahead and try practice three on your own. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you practice three. And you should have gotten two X plus three over four. Why can't we do this one for the quiz? <laughs> Is this one easier? Yeah, so it's super easy. Do you have a question? Oh, I meant it up. Do you understand what you did wrong? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go to example four. So both of these, the numerator and the denominator, we can factor. So I'm gonna start with our numerator. 2x squared plus 2x. What can I factor out in this one? 2x. 2x, so let's divide by 2x. And I'm left with- x plus one. x plus one. And don't forget the 2x on the outside. And then we'll do 3x squared and 3x. And that common factor, 3x. So we have 3x times x plus 1. OK. All right, so on this example, what can we factor out? Yes, we can factor out the x plus 1. Can we factor anything out, else out? The x's, the x's cancel out. Think of this as x to the power of one, x to the power of one. So, so, three. so we have, oops, x to the power of one minus one, which is zero, and x to the power of zero is one. So basically, and like I said early, earlier, anything divided by itself is one, so that cancels out. And yes, the final answer would be two over three. Okay, I want you to try practice four on your own. And I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, so I stopped here. And you should have gotten five X times X plus four in your numerator and three X squared times X plus four in your denominator. And we already know that the X plus four will cancel out. What about your X's, your variables? They don't stay the same. So remember, we have x to the power of one minus the power of two. Remember that? Yeah, except there are more x's in the bottom, so they'll stay in the bottom. Actually, I should have just done two minus one like that, and then you get x. So remember, if there are more variables, more of the same variables in the denominator, they stay in the denominator. If there are more of those variables in the numerator, they stay in the numerator. So this cancels out and this two is a one. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, if we had X over X squared, how would you simplify that? Okay, let's look at it this way. If I have X over X times X, yeah, so these two cancel out, but I'm left still left with one X on the bottom. Five over three X. Yep. All right. Let's go to example five. So now we're getting into the more, more factoring. And this is where you have to remember the rules to factoring. So let's 2x minus 8 is the same as what we've been doing. And you can divide both of these by 2. OK, so here on the numerator, you get two times X minus four. Now on the denominator side, do you guys notice something about this term, these two terms, 
Yeah, they're perfect squares. So remember, you have the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 16 is 4. And this is the difference of squares. Is it? Yeah, the difference of two squares. So the way that you would write this would be um, x plus 4 times x minus 4. All right? Mm -hmm. I don't understand this one. The factoring of this one? You don't get this right here, x squared minus 16? So, so if this was, I believe, in lesson 7-7, seven -seven, so the one you just turned in, and we had all the different variations of, or uh, it was called factoring special cases. Let me see if I have it. And okay. And if you remember, we had problems like this, where you have perfect square trinomials, and the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 36 is 6. In this case, it would be x minus 6 times x minus 6. It gives you x minus Wait, six. Just it up a little bit. I want, I want to see. Oh. Okay. So those were one type of problem. Uh, and then we had on the next page, we had what we just worked out. We had factoring a difference of two squares where I kind of call this a perfect square binomial. So you have x squared minus 25, x squared, the square root of x squared is x and the square root of 25 is five. And because there is no middle term here, you just have um, two terms, then you would write it out. I don't know like when to do it. Like I don't, like, I don't do it when you come to a problem where you only have two terms and they are both perfect squares. Oh, so it, it has to be perfect. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you look at practice five, it's just like fact, or example five. And so the bottom is a difference of squares. So I want you to go ahead and solve that one. I'm going to pause the video. Okay. I'm now going to show practice five. Make sure you understand. Okay. How's it three over x plus five? Because I factored out oh, the numerator. Oh, because it's two of the uh, the. Oh yeah, x minus nine and x minus nine cancel out. All right, let's go ahead and go to the back page. More factoring. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the example problems with you, and then I'm going to have you do all the practice on your own, and then we'll go through and check it. So let's look at example six. The numerator, we can factor out a three. Okay. And then in the denominator, we need to find, and this goes back to 7-5, we need to find factors of negative 6 that add up to 1. Okay? So we have 2 times 3. But one of them needs to be negative. And since our middle term is a positive 1, that means our big number, our larger number, has to be positive. So it's going to be negative 2. And if you remember how to do this, that means that we have x minus 2 times x plus 3. And we can only factor this way if our coefficient here is 1. Okay? So we're, we're applying we everything we've learned into one big lesson. And do we solve? Well, then we write that out and we simplify it. So we have 3 times x minus 2. We do 1 over x plus now, times over x minus 2 times x plus 3. And now we simplify this. Well, 
So our x minus twos cancel out. Yes. So then our final answer is three over x plus three. Well, how about you put parentheses? You don't need them, but you can put them if it helps you. So you're not gonna give that so wrong. No. Oh, All right, sorry. let's do example six. Okay, so in my numerator, I'm going to find factors of 16 that add up to a negative eight. Okay, so positive 16. So I have one and 16, two and eight, four and four. So which numbers give us an eight? The four and four. So four times four is 16, but four plus four is a positive eight. So what do we have to do with our factors? Yeah, you have to make them negatives. So then up here in our numerator, we have X minus four times X minus four. And in the denominator, we cannot factor that. Well, negative four plus four is a zero we need a negative eight up here. Remember, you have to find factors of 16 that add up to a negative eight. Okay. You're trying to get a positive 16, right? Yes, negative four times negative four is a positive 16. Um, okay. okay. All right, so now we can simplify. We can cross off X minus four on the top, X minus four on the bottom. So our final answer is X minus, four. X minus four. You have to put it over parentheses or not? You don't have to, but you can. Two. Oh, my numbering's messed up. Yeah, that should be six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's go to example seven. Okay, so in the numerator, we have to find factors of eight that give us a negative six. So you have one and eight, two and four. Right. So we have two and four, two times four gives us eight, but we need a negative six. Both of them are negative. So the top, the numerator is X minus two times X minus four. Now let's do the denominator. We have a negative six, we need a positive one. And we just did that one up in, in examples, the first example six. Which one's gonna be negative, the two or the three? Two. Two. Because this is positive, our larger number has to be positive. So we're gonna put this over x minus two times x plus three, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify. So our X minus twos can cancel out. And we're left with X minus four in the numerator and X plus three in the denominator. Okay, before we move on to example and practice eight, I want you to do practice six, six and seven. The two sixes and the seven, I'll have to change that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a minute to do that and then um, we'll come back and check those. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and go over these practice ones, see if you got them right. So here um, are the first two, practice six and practice six. Any questions on either one of these? Okay, and here is practice seven. Wait, can I put the top one Hold on just a second. Any questions on this one? Okay. okay. All right. So let's go ahead and go to example eight. Now, the difference in example eight is that our coefficients are not one. That means we have to apply factoring by grouping to both of these problems. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to check is, can I factor out a GCF? And I can't. So now what I'm going to, oops. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take factors of five times negative eight. So factors of negative 40 that give me a positive six. 
Okay, so uh, four and 10. So four times 10 gives me a positive 40, not a negative 40. Which one of these needs to be negative? Four. four. Okay, so I'm gonna take negative four and 10 and replace those with, um, I'm gonna replace six with those. So now this is less than five dash six or no, yeah, five dash six. So I'm gonna go write five X squared minus four X plus 10 X minus eight. Okay, you guys remember this? No. No, uh-oh. Okay, go back and look at five dash seven or five dash six. Wait, All right. I just six like this a month ago. No, it wasn't. It was like a week and a half ago. Five dash six. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna solve by grouping. And the greatest common factor between five x squared and negative four x is just x. And the greatest common factor between ten x and eight is two, okay? Now the X goes on the outside of your parentheses and then you simplify. You end up with five X minus four. Then your two goes on the outside of your parentheses. And when you simplify, you get five X minus four. So then your final answer for this would be 5x minus 4 times x plus 2. And that is your numerator. I'm better with the other way around. That's okay. X plus 2. Yep. So. Now we have to do the same thing with our denominator. So we're going to find factors of negative 6 that add up to five. So we have negative six. Well, not two and three, because look, if we have two and three, two plus three is five, but two times three is a negative six. So what is it? Negative one and six. Yeah, we're gonna have negative one and positive six. So let's go ahead and write this out. We have three X squared minus one X and then we have six X minus two, and we're gonna factor this out. So again, the GCF between three X squared and negative one X is just X. And the GCF between six X and two is two. So we have X times three X minus one, and then two times 3x minus 1. So your final answer would be 3x minus 1 times x plus 2. So we'll write that up here. So the final answer is 5x minus 4 3x minus 1. Mm -hmm. So the x plus 2s cancel out, and we're left with 5x minus 4 over 3x minus 1. All right. Now, I want you to do practice 8 on your own. Okay? So you're just not going to do it? Get a piece of scratch paper if you need more room. Um, and then if you're waiting, you can go ahead and look at the back. Um, or start on your homework. So I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so this one was a little bit tricky. Um, we haven't seen something like this. So um, as long as you got down to the factoring part, that's good. And now I want to explain what happened here. So when I got down to this part down here, I have three X plus five times negative X plus two. So um, 
wait a minute. So, oh, I messed up up here. That is supposed to be a minus. So what I did was I took the negative out. I basically divided this by a negative one. And when I do that, I get a negative one on the outside and then X minus two on the inside. Okay. And then down here, I have an X minus two already. So when you have a situation like this, these two cross out. Okay. And then your final answer, because there's a negative one left here, your final answer is going to be negative 3x plus 5 over 5x plus 4. Okay. Now, I do not believe you're going to have one this challenging on your homework. Um, but if you do, you have an example of that. Okay. All right. That was hard. All right, let's go ahead and move to the back. Um, yep. Um, Some word problems. Okay, so um, the length of a rectangle is 3h plus 2, and the width is 9h plus 6. What is the ratio of its length to its width? Do you guys know what a ratio is? Do you remember? A ratio, all it is is a fraction, okay? And it's asking for the ratio of the length first, so that will be your numerator, to the width, which is your denominator. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the length, which is 3h plus two, over the width, which is 9h plus six, and you're gonna factor it like we did on the very first page, okay? So when we factor 9h plus 6, these are both divisible by 3. So we have 3h plus 2 over 3 times 3h plus 2, okay? 1 over 3. So these quick cancel out. So your final answer is 1 over 3. All right, you try practice nine on your own. It, okay, so let's look at practice nine. I'm gonna show you where I'm at so far. This is where you should get to if you have not already gotten to this point. So we can see that our two X plus fives cancel out and we're left with two over six, but we can simplify this fraction. We could divide both of these by two and we end up with one third, okay? And this is the ratio of the length to the width. Basically what that means is for every one of the length, there's three times that of the width. Okay, let's go to example 10. The length of a rectangle is X minus two. The area is 2x minus 4. So what is the formula for the area of a rectangle? The area of a rectangle equals, you guys forget this? Length times width. And they're asking here for the width. Do you guys remember uh, literal equations, how to rearrange this equation so we're solving for the width? So basically I want to isolate this W. So what would I need to do to this side of the equation to isolate my W? Divide by L. So I'm gonna divide both sides by L, get rid of L. So if I wanna know the width in this situation, I'm gonna take my area and divide it by my length. Okay, so let's take the area. The area is 2x minus 4. And we're going to divide it by the length, which is x minus 2. And all we're doing is we're simplifying. Nope, not right now. Nope, not yet. Okay, so let's factor the 2x minus 4. 
we get two times x minus two divided by x minus two. And these two cancel out. And our answer is two. So are there any questions about that? The next one is the same thing. So really all you're doing is you're dividing your area by your length. So go ahead and try that one and then we'll come back and check it. All right, when you're finished, you could check your answer. And that concludes lesson seven dash nine.